How's it going? Welcome to the shop. Hope you're having a great day. I've been putting these knives off for long enough. Let's see how the hormones look on these knives. Get them all polished up and ready to go. Are you ready? Here we go. Welcome back. So sorry I didn't have a video up Saturday. Today's actually Saturday afternoon and I got caught up in the heat treat oven and started working on it and had problems here and problems there and all kinds of things that happened and man that'll just have to be for another video and but anyways let's get the handles off these dip them in some ferric and see what we look like with the hormones and then go from there to the bench. All right, gloves on. This isn't actually for my hands touching ferric. I've actually touched ferric plenty of times. It stains the hell out of your hands for days, but this is for after I clean the knife and I touch it, I won't get fingerprints on it because that's one big problem. I always keep alcohol, rubbing alcohol, 90% rubbing alcohol on the bench. It works for cleaning. It works for if you cut yourself. It works for everything. When you're doing epoxy, it cleans the epoxy off. I also have uh, acetone. When I first put it in this bottle, I was like, wait, does acetone eat away plastic? So I was careful with it, but it's been in here forever. It's just easier than opening that whole bottle. First, we'll acetone these off. We got some clean rags right here. A few shots of acetone. Let's make sure we don't spray on anything. That's one thing I always forget is when I'm spraying stuff to look where the spray is going, not just what I'm spraying it on. Acetone, get it all nice and clean. These are all 1095 blades. If you watched the, the karambit in the beat curve bill when I was doing the heat treating, which I'll put that video right here, I didn't grind the bevels in this first and then I ground the bevels in this one to see if there's any difference. So five months later, we'll finally see if there's a difference between grinding the bevels first and not when it comes to hormone. They're both 316 steels, both 1095 and both done about the same time. So we'll see how it goes. So I actually went and hit all these blades on the scotch right, I think I have one of them that's cut down in half, but I just want to dip it. I just got them nice and clean and plain looking and and, and then we're going to dip them to see where we need to go from there. I got a few different types of belts so we can work with that or see what we need to do. It'll be interesting. I don't know. I might have to dip half of this and then dip the other half because of that curve, but we'll see. So some alcohol. I got my hooks right here. So hang it up so it doesn't touch anything. If you watch that one video where I broke all the end mills trying to do the uh, handles. See, this is what I usually do if I remember, but sometimes I get so caught up in heat treating that I forget to do this before. It's a good thing for the weight, you know. It drops the weight in your handles. Makes the knife a lot lighter. I got some steel wool here for the ferric. I'm surprised I didn't call it stainless steel. For some reason on camera, I always call this stainless, but... <laughs> Let these all dry up a little bit, and then we'll get them in the ferret. Let me go set up the cameras over there. So real quickly before I get to the ferret, I want to show you the state of this oven. I fired it up. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw it got the 1500 Fahrenheit in two minutes. But I think that was too hot, too fast. And plus, I, I'm gonna, I, I ordered some metal, so I'm gonna have to build a chassis for this because, man, I think when the, the, the elements expanded, it pushed out so this gave way so I started trying to fix that when I tried to fix this that gave way and I had to redo the whole thing so this is a whole learning process but I'll get to that later I just wanted to show you I had to put a board here to hold everything together and, and put stuff here and man this has been the rabbit hole from hell <laughs> and I've got a whole stuff that I have to update the electronics from but like I said I'll get into that in the next video Let's get to the ferric. I'm gonna start with the cram at first to see what we can get done on this. I got the other ones hanging up. I did a video on my stone washing and my ferric and all that. I'll put that one up here too, or up here I guess it is. <laughs> Let's see how we can get this one to fit. Oh, 
Will it go? Will it go? Nope. Only goes that far. <laughs> so we're gonna have to we're gonna have to dip this uh, twice. That's what I thought. Remember, just light. You don't want to use it like sandpaper. This is a uh, steel wool. So we're just gonna do a light spread. Well, since I forgot to turn this camera on, let me show you guys that again. <laughs> the hamon came out real nice on the recurve. Look at that. Woo! Real nice. And there's the drop point with the swedge. Came out real nice. Boom. On the re on the karambit, it came out, but not as pronounced. You see how it's kind of hazy in there? You can kind of see one, but it's just not as pronounced as the other two. So let me get the camera off. I'm going to put these in baking soda. Then I'll meet you back at the bench. Now, a lot of people use Windex, and I've tried Windex. Every time I've tried Windex, I find rust on the blade and I have to go dip it in baking soda. So I don't know what it is with the ammonia or whatever it is, but baking soda doesn't leave that rust. Meet you back at the bench. So this is what I always fill my thing with baking soda and all that, so. Baking soda's in here and then I just dip the knives. Whew, look how black. See all this black oxide coming in? Yeah, I took my gloves off so I could clean up and move my cameras and all that and forgot to put them on. Now, you see me do this with a lot of stuff, but once I get it cleaned up, I put some PB Blaster on or some kind of penetrating oil. I got a box of rags on the floor. <laughs> Look at all those oxides coming off. Yeah. I mean, some people use Windex. I've just never used it and had it not rust or show some kind of rust, so I don't and I've tried with ammonia, without ammonia, so I don't know. I mean, there is a hormone line on this karamba. but you can see it right here, hopefully on the camera. But it's not as predominant as this one. And it's not as deep. Like you got a good half inch there, you've only got maybe a quarter inch to here, so. And I did them both the exact same way. The only thing different was I ground this one after heat treat and I ground that one before. So I think it does make a difference. It took five or six months to figure out, but we got it. <laughs> all right, let me put all this stuff away. This is an old uh, Trizac belt. It's pretty worn, but it's still got some life because I don't want this black oxide on a new belt. And then when we do the recurve, I got this old cork belt that I cut. We'll do that. <clears throat> well, let's see how it goes from here. Might as well start on the cram bit, so here we go. So well, that's what happens when it's been a while and you forget how you grounded it. 
I did this side high, so I had to bring this side up. And then I brought this up, so now... Okay, we're going to have to bring this up to here. Alright, that ain't too bad. Then we'll get back on track. So from here, I'm going to put a new Trizac belt on, but let's uh, get that old Trizac. Well, we got this on here. And get the black oxide off the other one. Let me get that scotch break. We'll hit everything. Throw this belt away because it's pretty much done. <laughs> and then we'll go up to like 700 grit. Well, we'll see. I got some cork belts. I might try some cork belts. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Look at that moon right there and right there. All right, so let's get out these. Uh, uh, what do I want to use? Here's an old 800 cork belt. I'm going to try it on the cramp. It's probably even got polish on it or something, but we'll see what happens. The cramp seems to be my test piece from now on, so <laughs> here we go. So here's an A30 Trizac. This is about 700. It's still a used one, but it's not that worn. I just don't want to put a brand new one. I still have black stuff on it.
All right, so I got an A65 here, which is basically, I think, uh, 200 grit. I think it goes A65, 240 or something like that, and A45 is 400 grit, and so on, so. Let's see what we can do. This is a fairly new belt. All right, now let's go back to the buffer with these two. Without any compound, just put the buffing wheel on and see if we can get these cleaned out and see how we get them looking. All right, I'll meet you over there. So I got a little bit of white compound. You can notice I took this really black wheel off. I thought I'd put this one on, but uh, I don't think so. I got this one that's pretty white, so we'll try that, put a little bit of white compound, see what we get. You've probably heard me talk about Niels Van Berg before, but he's, he has a tip on this where if you want to clean your wheel off, you take a belt. Now be careful, the, you know, uh, buffers aren't called the most dangerous machine in the shop for any reason. They are dangerous. So one thing buffing and stuff like that does, look, I miss spots here, so I gotta go back to the grinder and hit here. If you look right here, you can see the hormone. Once again, I use kind of goo gone and stuff to get all the wax and stuff off or the polish, so we can actually see what's going on. So it looks like our grinds are pretty good up to here, but right here I gotta go back and hit on the belt. I'll be back and then we'll do the crab bit. So I went and tackled it back down and went back up. So let's see if it works now. All right, let me go hit it on an 800 cork belt and see if we got any goodness coming out. So I think that's about it. I was editing the video last night and we're already up to 19 minutes. So next video, we'll start this. Actually, I'm starting it right now. So when I end this video, I'll be starting the next one. <laughs> Just to have it in the chamber. So I got steel coming for the heat treat oven. That will probably be the next video just to get that all tied up and taken care of and all that. But what we've done to this and get it up to this far and then when we get here, 
then uh, we'll figure out what we want to do next. But we're all polished up, all good to go. Trying to see if we can see the Hamon in it. I can see him, but uh, I don't know if the camera's actually picking that up. It actually looks like fingerprints. <laughs> there we go. I don't need to wear sunglasses. I can just wear that. That way I can look into the monitor and you don't know if I'm looking at you or into the... <laughs> see, I'm looking into the monitor. <laughs> now you can't tell. All right, so there we go. Nice and shiny. This should be real nice. Both of them should be real nice when uh, we either dip them in the coffee or just uh, wipe them down with some more ferric to bring out the Simones. And so we got a lot more work from here. This is just getting it all prepped. So like I said, this one's next. That'll have to be for next time because yeah, I'd like to try to stay under 20 minutes. Like it if you like it, dislike it if you don't. Leave comments down below of how you do your hormones or how you prep your knives for finishing them or if you like to two-tone them or anything like that. Or if you've got questions about hormones or about knife making, make sure to ask. I'll do my best to answer them for you. Amazon links are up above or down below in the description on my website, along with shirts like this. This is the new shirt. This is actually the Tri Blend. It's actually a little bit more expensive, but man, it feels real nice. So there's that, there's a couple knives. Hopefully soon there'll be all these knives up on the website, but thank you for the support. Hope you're all having a great day. And as always, take it easy.